morning. Good morning, everyone. It's Tractor Man 44 here. Today, I'm over at my much older brother's house. Uh, he has a tendency to have a, a bit more of an eclectic uh, flair whenever it comes to collecting things from days gone by. And today, what I'm going to show you is a, um, a precursor to the modern oxygen acetylene cutting torch. You know, acetylene's got to come from somewhere. And so uh, acetylene is actually generated by use of uh, calcium chloride. And um, this is an acetylene generator. God only knows how old it is, uh, but he come across it sometime or another a while back. So, you know, he went ahead and placed it in storage, so to speak, uh, saving it for posterity. Like I said, it's just part of the evolution of modern machinery. And uh, both of us kind of have a tendency to enjoy kind of kind of saving some of that stuff, you know. This thing could have been in the junkyard many, many years ago. Now, see, you can obviously see that it's, uh, that it's on its own cart. It's got swivel casters on the front, you know, and a set of handlebars back there for wheeling around. And it's for use on the job site or in the shop, either one. All you have to have is a, a, your own source of regulated oxygen to go in through the back of it. And then out of the front will be the, uh, the, the source for the pressurized acetylene that will be generated from the confines of that tank that's down below. So I'll give you a bit of an overview or what we can figure out. The name of it is a site feed. In other words, it's uh, you know made for making uh, acetylene on site, I would assume. It says portable, autom portable automatic acetylene generator. It's got tags on it and everything with warning labels and then telling you specifically what type of uh, calcium carbide to use. I'm not familiar with that much with calcium carbide, but up here is the tag that says uh, 14NG industrial calcium carbide only. A general overall look at everything concerning this machine tells me that it's been inside a shop. It has not been taken to the job sites very often because you don't find anything that's this old that's had a rough life banging into things on a job site and being used by everybody and his brother, you know, uh, not really caring about how they treat some tools. Uh, you would never find a piece that's been any length of time at all outside of a, an enclosed shop or a shop area in this little shape. It's really quite unusual as far as I'm concerned and really neat. And like I said, you can actually see, I had this laying down a little while ago, so you can actually see the level of, uh, of calcium carbide that's actually still in the, uh, in the glass. They've got that glass very well protected, you know, behind the, behind the screen and everything. So that's really cool. Just from stuff we've read and, and understand about acetylene, having used oxygen acetylene torches, you know, for years and years and years, we know that a mixture of the uh, calcium carbide and water creates that acetylene gas. A lot of the old cars back turn of the century, back in the 1900s, had acetylene gas headlights and stuff on them. Uh, they would generate and burn the flame behind the glass and that's what the uh, what the headlights were but at any rate you can see here you've got a vat or a glass filled tank it's got a certain level of calcium carbide in it uh, so we could probably clean this up and and go about the business of generating ourselves but we're not going to um, but at any rate you know, on the back is your typical and standard place for your oxygen tank you know first you chain to hold it into place but uh, the way this works you would fill your tank with water. This will spin off right here. This will, will hinge forward. This will spin sideways like this and you pull the complete cap or pull this completely off right here and you fill your water into the tank. Lock it back into place. Set this back to that position right there. And then when you raise this right here, what it'll do is it'll just shoot a blast of calcium carbide right through that funnel down in to mix with that water. Okay, at that point, you start generating your, uh, your acetylene. The acetylene then will pass out of the tank via a hose, come right over to this regulator right here. And then, uh, the regulator does not appear to have any adjustment on it whatsoever, uh, but it does have a gauge here, and it's got a gauge that shows zero to 15 PSI, and everything beyond 15 PSI is red because Acetylene becomes highly volatile and it just becomes dangerous whenever you exceed 15 PSI or pounds per square inch of pressure. Uh, but I'm, we're going to assume that this here is going to be where you would touch your acetylene hose to your oxygen acetylene torch. And of course your oxygen tank sitting back here, you would attach your uh, oxygen side to the oxygen tank and you got your standard oxygen acetylene mixer. And it doesn't take any kind of a special mixture at all. It's going to be a standard oxygen acetylene mixer. This tank right here, like I said, 
you, you put a certain level and there's marks on it to tell you how much water to put in. And then I'm sure there's calculations by how much, uh, how much and how often you have to raise this up to admit that uh, calcium carbide into the vat of water. Uh, I don't know exactly how that would work, but I'm sure there's something that you can, that you would have if you use this machine to tell you how much to dump in. Obviously you wouldn't dump the entire vat or anything like that. It's probably just going to be a blast or two. And I think you would probably have to monitor your pressure on your gauge and then add or, you know, add or vent if you get low on pressure or if you get up near to exceeding the pressure. And this right here is the, uh, where the, where the acetylene would come out. Acetylene in your tank is actually liquid form in the bottom of your tank. And so it draws vapor off of the top of it. So as this creates that, um, that acetylene, it's going to go into the bottom of this little tank right here. And then, of course, the vapor is what you're going to be coming downstream of the regulator and then out and into your hose over here. And then whenever you're done with everything, you need to drain everything out or flush it or in a cleaning mode. This right here is just a, an open a valve at the very bottom that uh, you drain everything out and then use that for the cleaning process or servicing process as well. Now to engage or to give you pressure, you have to move this lever right here and that puts pressure on the diaphragm which would allow the fuel or the, 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 the fuel to pass. It also vents all the pressure in the event you need to take this off to replenish the supply of the calcium carbide because obviously they've got this to where it interferes with the rotation of this so in this mode here logic tells you that you're passing you're a, you are able to pass gas this right here would probably bypass and close off the regulator so that you can safely remove the top that's speculation we'd have to do a little bit more thinking about that process to be sure that that's the way it works but using a little bit of logic, it would tell you that you would have to, this would have to shut something off before that opens because it comes into contact of that. So it would tell you that this probably shuts everything off so you can safely disconnect. All in all, this is really a fancy little machine. It's uh, got some brass and stuff on it, you know, of course, a lot of cast iron and everything. But uh, a fella could take this and you could service it and you could clean it up and you could really make one awesome uh, museum piece out of this. Not that we're into that or anything. We prefer to keep everything pretty much the way we get it, uh, simply because we're too lazy to make things nice, you know what I mean? But at any rate, it would, uh, this would be an awesome piece to uh, have on display at some of these businesses that uh, decorate their offices with, what do they call it, um, not, not industrial chic, what do they call that? At any rate, there's a term for all those businesses that, that utilize old industrial components and have them in and around their atriums, their office spaces, hanging on the walls, hanging from the ceilings and stuff. Uh, you know, for decoration. Uh, but this would also be a very nice museum piece for any kind of machinery for machinery shop. It's virtually complete except for an oxygen tank which you can get anywhere and of course the mixer and then the rotted the rotted acetylene hose. But other than that, that's about all I got to say about it. It's just kind of a, a neat little piece. I was over here this morning delivering some parts and pieces to the, uh, the much older brother and uh, he said he'd pull this out and kind of wanted to uh, let y'all see it. So, hope you all enjoyed it, and this is TrackMan44, and I am out of here, guys.